welcome back to another video with me, Mo Nordico, on the Mo Cycle. Today I'm going to talk to you about something um, quite odd, quite strange, quite interesting, see if you ask me. It's a topic that I first encountered online about um, two, three, three years ago, maybe. And uh, it is the Maybe some of you already have heard about this phenomena, but for those of you who hasn't, I'm gonna tell you about it right now. So, <laughs> has its name, as you could imagine, from the guy Nelson Mandela, who spent a lot of time in prison. And apparently, many people all around the world, not me personally, Remember that Nelson Mandela died actually while he was still in prison like in the 80s or in the really early 90s But that's not the case Because he died in 2013 I believe So how come so many people have really strong memories of him dying? While in prison that's really strange because he didn't die there He actually became even president of South Africa for a while after he got out of jail, and as I said, he died much later. So this gave the name to this effect, to this theory, which is basically false mass remembering. Let me give you some more example of things that people remember completely different than what they actually were. That's actually documented history. The movie Star Wars, the scene with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, where Luke is just about to find out, spoiler alert, who's the real father of him. Do you remember what they say? Luke says, he told me enough, he told me you kill him. And the response from Darth Vader is, Luke, I'm your father. Is that what you remember too? Well, that's not what he said. He never said it. He said, no, I'm your father. I mean, take a look at it yourself right here. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. So that's pretty strange. I personally haven't even seen the movie, but I, you know, I was familiar with the quote. So that's really strange. But there is more. There was a really popular series called Sex in the City. Sex in the City. Do you guys remember that? Well, many people remembering it was Sex and the City. Sex and the City, Sex in the City. Well, it actually is Sex and the City, which I remember. I never really watched it, but it used to be on TV when I was younger. So I, you know, I flashed by the TV and it was there and I saw it, oh, it's Sex and the City. That's what I personally remember, but many people remember Sex in the City. Let me give you another example. Have you played the really time-consuming game Monopoly? Well, you know the, the, the figure of the game, the Monopoly guy, you remember? He had like a monocle, you know, like one glass eye. You know, the glasses is just for one eye. Did he or did he? No, he did not. He never had a monocle. So that's pretty strange because many, many people remember that he did. So this is all examples of the Mandela effect. Things that many people remember but never actually happened that way they, they remember it. It's really interesting, it's really strange and there is many theories why this is happening. Is it simply that people remember things wrong? Well, in my belief probably. Could it be misquotes? Most definitely. For example, this uh, example with the Monopoly guy, there is a scene in the Ace Ventura, which is a really great movie with Jim Carrey, where he kind of knocks out this old guy and makes fun of him, the Monopoly guy. And the fun part is that he has the monocle and the mustache and he kind of looks like the Monopoly guy. That's the fun part. Probably that's why people remember him that way, because Ace Ventura was a really popular movie. So they remember that scene with the guy wearing a monocle and connecting it to the monopoly guy, which isn't true. So there are many, many, many examples. I'm not gonna take all of them. You could just 
search for the Mandela effect examples and you will find a lot of them. There is even some crazy ones that uh, claim that Australia isn't where it used to be, that islands have disappeared and that the North Pole never existed as a landmass. You know, on the top of this globe, it's not there. It never was, apparently. All kind of crazy stuff. So some people even claim that this Mandela effect is caused by some, you know, parallel universe that have merged together or that were actually transferred and living in a parallel universe since I don't know when. And that's why some small kind of stuff have changed here and there. Another example, the famous movie with uh, Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. He sits on this bench telling his stories and then he tells this lady, my mom always said that life is like a box of chocolates. Life is like a box of chocolates. But he never said it. He said life was like a box of chocolates, which kind of not really makes sense. My mom always said that life was like a box of chocolates. No, why would she say that it was? When did it change? I personally don't believe in this parallel universe kind of thing. I think it's simply people remembering things wrong. And many of these examples, you know, it's misquoted sometimes many times. So you just remember a quote, but the quote was actually not correct. And but you, you, how would you know? For example, me, I never watched Star Wars. Uh, I have seen Forrest Gump, but not that too, you know, like one, two times a long time ago. So for me, I don't really believe it. But there was a time when I was working at a hotel about three years ago. About the same time that I actually heard about this Mandela effect the first time. And that's what my story is going to be about today. So when I first heard about this, I found it to be really interesting, really strange. So I had this in my mind. I have been watching all of these example videos with the Darth Vader, with the Forrest Gump, with the Berenstein, Berenstein Bears that you will find if you search for this, which I have no personal relation to at all. You will find a cartoon show, you know, the Looney Tunes. The Looney Tunes, you know, it ends with a T-O-O-N-E-S, like the cartoon, Looney Tunes. But it never was that way, it's actually Looney Tunes, T-U-N-E-S, like a music tune, you know, which is also weird. Anyhow, so I, I had all this in my mind, you know, these things that was changing, supposedly. And as I said, I was working at the hotel about the same time I, I discovered this Mandela Effect thing. And we're actually headed to that exact hotel right now, so I can show you in person what I'm uh, talking about. It's a medium big hotel, it's really close to the airport of Stockholm, Arlanda. The formation of the building is kind of like a V, you could say, or an L. It's like two parts divided with an angle, and the entrance is kind of in the middle. So when you come from the airport, which basically all of the guests were doing, because that's the whole point of the hotel there, it's for the airport guests, you know. So when you arrive at the hotel from the airport, at the part to the left on the building, we have this really, really big sign with the logo and the name Good Morning Hotel. You're gonna see it in a short while. And I remember it clearly being on that side because I always came from that direction to work, you know. And I used to park basically in front of it. And I always like to point my motorcycle with the rear uh, pointed towards the, the house or whatever I'm parking in front. So when I am ready to leave, I could just get on the bike and go without have to turn it around or anything, you know? So that's how I usually park it. And one day I came to work, I rolled up my bike and I happened to take a look in the mirror and exactly at the spot where this big sign used to be, there was absolutely nothing. It was just the, the building without any sign. So I was like, Yo, where did that sign go? What, what is this? And as I left my bike, ready to enter, lo and behold, there it was, the big sign on the other side, on the opposite side of the building, the very same sign. And it was like it had just shifted from there to there without any reason, you know? So that's really strange. And to be honest, it kind of freaked me out a little bit because I... As I told you, I was 
just in this Mandela effect zone with all these things going through my mind. So of course, that's what my first thought was. Oh my God, I freaking experienced the Mandela effect in my own personal life here. What's going on? This is madness. Or is it? Well, of course, it had a reasonable explanation. And I should also mention, while working at this hotel, I wasn't working there full time. I was working extra a couple of weekends here and there, usually two, three days, like every weekend, every other weekend. So I would never see if they were actually anybody there taking it down, putting it up on the other side, you know, because I wasn't there too much. And it turned out that that was the case. We had uh, like a new owner at that time who, for some reason, which to me still is unknown, decided to change the location simply of the sign. It shouldn't be to the left where everybody would see it when coming from the airport. I mean, here to the right, you can spot it through the trees. There is the airport. And we even have like these minivans that we use to go and pick up our guests and bring them to, to the hotel. And the hotel is actually just straight up here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. I was coming from the right and then I was going all the way here. Yeah. And there I had a tire slip. <laughs> gravelly, gravelly. All right. Nice to see that my reflexes are with me. All right, so the hotel is up here to the left. As you can see, there is the big sign on the right side, which doesn't make any sense. Yes, there is a road from the other side, but there is a really big parking here for cars, for the people who are going with the, the, the planes. They leave the cars here, you know, the long time parking. And there is like a forest. So if you're coming from that way, like in front of the sign, the way it is now, you can't really see it. So why would anybody think it's a good idea to put it there? All right, I'm gonna show you here real good, look. So this is the building, as you can see. Let's just make sure we don't have anybody approaching. All right, so this is the building. And here are the minivans that we use to go pick up and leave the guests at the airport. And there is the sign, and like in front of the sign, back over there, you can see just trees and woods and basically nothing. You can't really see the sign, only when you enter here. And as I said, it always used to be up here to the left, which makes a lot of sense because you see it better when you're entering the hotel. You see it better while driving up from the big street down there. So it doesn't even really make any sense. But boy, did it freak me out. And right now I'm actually going to show you some pictures. Look at that. Yeah, so what I did that there, well, I entered. And of course I talked to my colleagues at once. And they uh, explained to me what had happened, of course. So that's it, guys. My personal experience of the Mandela effect. And actually here where this Volkswagen is parked is where I used to park. I used to come up here and back up my bike like this so I would have the building on my back and I used to be able to see the sign here but that day I didn't and it freaked me out but it had an explanation so that was my personal experience of the <laughs> have you ever experienced this what do you think about the examples how do you remember them and what do you think the explanation is my experience here at the hotel had its reasons, but how about the other examples that I gave you? Is the Mandela effect a real thing? Or are people simply remembering wrong? Well, let me know in the comment down below. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I see you in another video. Bye.